Right. There's a moment of truth, I guess. It's everything off from outside the engine. And this one's got a spring behind it. It's called the spring retainer. Behind it. Now, some people will say, and it says in the book that you should uh, make a piece of cardboard or um, get a piece of polystyrene and, and push all these screws in in location so you can remember where they all go. But um, personally, it's not that difficult to uh, to remember where they all go because you don't need to. As you push a bolt back into its place, it will stick out a certain amount. And if it's sticking out way too far, it means it's too long. And if it goes all the way in and there's no room to screw it back in, then it's too short, and in like 99% of the time, that's okay. Right, this is the these three other main bearing retainer. Oh, sorry guys, but I'm gonna have to use the, the impact wrench just just to make it easier. Yeah, they say you shouldn't use too much um, impact tools on. Where you've got steel fasteners going into aluminium, obviously there's always a risk that you can damage because aluminium is way softer than steel. But I think if, if you're careful, you can probably get away with it. Definitely don't use impacts for assembling because you can strip threads as soon as look at them. Right, these retainers I think are all the same. Same again, I think with these I'm just going to pop the screws back in because it won't affect the, uh, the casing and it won't affect me cleaning and it's just one less thing to transmission output flip over again I did look at that last time okay that wasn't right. something fell out and it's not like that at all that came out of there fortunately there's an angle on the bottom and there's an angle on the bottom down there too so that's where the spring went in Whoa, I didn't like that much. This is another case where you really have to have the special tools. It's not that special, but you know, always put your fingers on them because if they spring off, really you want the nose to point forward. Right? Goes on there, and there's also a washer. So, I'll just put those together. Just so they can't get lost. Back. Excuse my old underpants. <coughs> Support on wooden blocks, it says. Oh, that was a big chunk. That's what's going to make this all worthwhile. Look at that. A great big chunk of piston. Wow. Where did that come from, huh? It's pretty sturdy. Right. Because it's a big case, um, there'll be an order. You know, you might have heard of like, cylinder heads. You know, you have to tighten them and untighten them in a particular way to stop them twisting. It just says uh, loosen in a crisscross fashion. And then you do that one. I'm wondering if I should get the bigger torque set. So you just do them half a turn like that. So I did that one and that one. And come and do this one. Yeah, I'm gonna switch to three eighths. Big boys. So basically you just work your way around. In a bit of a random manner, going opposite ends. Always make sure you've got a lot of pressure down and, and don't twist. Use your arms to hold it. Crucial that you keep it flat and don't try and twist it to funny angles. 
and use the block to lever off if you can. Right. Right, so now that's a long one, but you see what I mean? When you put it in, there's only <clears throat> the width of a finger sticking out. You know what I mean? So that, that's obviously shorter. So if I drop that in there, look, it's going to go all the way down. So you know it's a new one, one. And that one, if I put that in there, it sticks out a mile. So it, <clears throat> if you use your noddle, you're not going to get into trouble. One thing that's slightly worrying me with this engine is the fact that because it's new um, <clears throat> the sealant that holds these two halves together is going to be in great condition and I don't want to have to uh, hammer it too much to, um, you know, to get it to, to open and you can't really drive anything in between them um, because you risk damaging the mating faces and then it will leak forever more. I could put it something in the bore at the top here, maybe to push it apart to get it started. What you've got to absolutely make sure you don't do is miss one, because <clears throat> you know, you get confused with those. Because if you miss a bolt and then you're hammering away on it like a good one, you're going to break something. That's interesting. I'm sure there's a bolt there the other side. Yeah. What's that one then? It's got to be a crankcase bolt. And that's bloody annoying, because if I'd have missed that, I'd have been hammering away at it and broke the casing. And usually there's a few places that you can hammer on, like here, some bigger, heavier bits. I wouldn't hammer on the starter motor bit. <coughs> Ooh, not many on this. I never use a metal hammer. You're better off with a plastic hammer. Did you hear that note change? That was good. No, that's putting a wish for better than that. I thought it'd be a lot harder than that. And once it starts to come apart, just work your way around it. You'll see it start to open in the middle. You don't always have to hit something underneath like here. I'm just tapping upwards on the actual casing. And it's um, it's enough to start it going. Right. I'm lifting it off. Of course, there's all sorts of shit inside this. And what worries me is that I'll pull something out and not be able to see where it's come from. <laughs> I'm just pushing down on this. Uh, output shaft okay and what I would do don't tip it until you've had a look just go up like that you see that was a thrust washer and I saw where it came from it was on there so you need to be very very careful that you don't lose anything okay and there's another one there and that one must go it was on that one. So that one goes on there. So check check them all for these thrush washers, okay? And then you've got three bearings that can stay in the case. So what I will do is just flush these out. That one. Yep, they feel okay. That one has got crap in it. Can you see how that's rotating around easy? And that one rotates around easy. And this one? You see, it's stuck. It will go if I force it, but I can feel there's shit in that one. Well, not shit, but little bits of uh, little bits of piston. <clears throat> okay, I don't see anything else in there. That's disastrous. This is full. Oh, that's interesting. Look at this. Look at that. That's full of metal. Can you see that? That's all, uh, even little bits of piston, and that's literally, it's like grit, metal grit. If anyone ever tells you that you can just rinse an engine out, I wouldn't. A lot of this Honda Bond everywhere. Right, now here's the rest of the, I thought to bring you a bit closer for this actually. Okay, let's go and have a look. <clears throat> 
right, in here, look. Can you see? There and there. That's bits of piston. Okay, I'll put you back. <coughs> right. Right. This bearing should have they call it no discernible play, which basically means when you move it, like you see I'm rolling, rocking, and backwards and forwards, no play. And it should be smooth, and that is good. This one is good, which means I'm hoping the other one is. <clears throat> so providing this little end is good, and I can flush out the big end, this engine is going to live. Like, like a doctor. Pulling shrapnel out of a wound. I mean bear in mind I, I had this engine full of oil and flushed, full of diesel and flushed and yet it's still absolutely full of bits of broken piston and some are quite big. I wonder if I could just lift the whole assembly out without going too crazy. A oh, little bit and here's a close-up of inside the crankcase. On the left, you've got the little balancer shaft, and then the big one is the main crankshaft. And then at the top, you've got the two stacks of gears for the gearbox. And then underneath those is the two selectors and their pins, and then the drum itself, the gear selector drum. It helps if you don't leave the nut on it. Okay, so I'm gonna put that straight back on again. The key is already in there. So this, again, you need to inspect for scoring and wear here. It's tiny, isn't it? <clears throat> well, I think the crankshaft should just lift straight out. Again, always look underneath. To make sure there's no thrust washer or... right and that's the <clears throat> the other main bearing so you've got one here and one here and swizzling that round you can actually take the inner one out of here but that also feels good no no discernible play same with that Whew. so all i've got to do then is <coughs> is get the crap out of there because I can feel something there. Okay, so that's the crankshaft. And that is 400 pounds, British pounds. Let's take this inner race out since we're here. You can have a look at these needle roller bearings. They are all good, I have no worries about that. So I'm gonna put that back in just in case they fall out. I think most of the debris was in the bottom. It's just cleaning now. Right, boring bit. But you need to get all these bits of old sealant. You see there, look where it's sticking out on the inside. I mean, I've got to clean these faces anyway, but I'm trying to get all the big stuff out now. There's quite a bit there. It's quite a tricky job when you're putting it back on to have enough to make a good seal, but not so much that you. Um, it leaks, but it goes all over the place. Yeah, so basically any all those bits of grit that I saw are now kind of all rinsed into this bottom part. And what I'm going to do is tip it up, but I need to be careful that I don't tip out all this stuff. I'm assuming this will just all lift out. Okay, so that's that side pretty clean. And this side, I might use just these diesel on this side. Now, obviously, don't wear your best clothes. 
Otherwise, your dear lady wife will play hell. And as you can see here, that must be an oil way which feeds this bearing. And it could be that oil squirts out of there, splashes onto. That could be what lubricates the bottom of the piston <coughs> and cools the bottom of the piston. You shouldn't really pick this up with them because you can bend them. I decided to be brave in the end and I lifted out the two sets of gears from the gearbox. Um, they come out as a complete unit so you just have to like grab your fingers around them and lift them out. Um, there is a picture in the book if the worst happens and they, they get separated. And there I was just using a wood chisel to scrape off some of the silicon. And I know you're not supposed to, and you're supposed to use plastic, but plastic's rubbish. Um, and I am a carpenter, so I've got a pretty good control of the chisel, and I'm very careful not to make any marks in their face. And then I'm just using a piece of flat aluminium bar with a very fine piece of sandpaper on, just to remove the last of the gasket. And uh, obviously I'm being careful not to take any of the actual aluminium away. It's just to, just to clean it. So here what I've been doing is like flushing this, this oil way here delivers oil to these bearings <clears throat> and uh, like I said I can feel a bit of grittiness in them so you just spray them with the diesel. This is diesel and spray it with diesel and just keep spinning it and spinning it and spinning it just with your finger like that. You'll, you'll feel the, the bearing clear as all the, <clears throat> any tiny bits of aluminium get washed out. And you just have to look to make sure you're not missing anything. So, so now you, you can hear when they're right because there's no, well, A, A there's no, the tiniest thing will stop them from spinning. And as long as there's nothing else can wash into them now. <coughs> so you need to get a torch and have a good look in all of these little nooks and crannies just to make sure there's nothing hiding. I think that's uh, as good as I can get it without putting it in a big commercial parts washer. <clears throat> okay. So now we need to uh, let that drain overnight a bit. This is just the chain area so it's a bit filthy. Um, I should, I'll just end this video then with a note about cleanliness and that um, everything you do inside an engine, everything has to be spotless. Your workplace has to be spotless. Your tools have to be clean. You know, obviously your fluids have to be clean because you can't have any dirt at all. Nothing, you know, a single piece of grit inside an engine can cause havoc. So you really need to take a lot of time here, use a lot of fluid, rinse everything out, clean everything out, blow everything through with air lines, all the holes and passages and slots and all the little nooks and crannies and get it absolutely spotless and then uh, keep it clean, you know, keep it on the bench, cover it down when you're not working on it. Then you've got the best shot at having a, a long living engine. Okay, catch you in the next one. Right, thanks for watching. And if you found that useful or interesting, you know what to do. See you in the next one.